Hi guys, welcome back to Golden Reviewer. So here we have four devices. Two of them are the Galaxy S21 Ultra and two of them are the Galaxy S22 Ultra. And here we have all four processors or SOCs used in the S21 and 22 Ultra. Snapdragon 888, 8 Gen 1, Exynos 2200, and the Exynos 2100. And uh, here we can see that all four devices are the 512 gigs ROM um, variant. And uh, for the S22 Ultra, it's 12 gigs of RAM. For S21 Ultra, it's 16 gigs of RAM. Uh, I don't know why Samsung actually took a step backwards on this, but I guess it is what it is. And uh, to be honest, 4 gigs of RAM shouldn't make a huge difference. So today we are going to do a full benchmark comparison between all these four devices and four SOCs. The room temperature is kept at around 25 degrees and uh, I'll make sure to let the device cool down before I do each benchmark. And the very first thing we are going to do is uh, restart all these devices so that we can see how fast they actually restart as well as uh, we can make sure that they start from fresh, there is no running background process on each of these devices. So here the video is playing at original speed. I, I don't speed it up so that you can have a better feeling of how quickly each of these devices can boot up. Yep, so the S22 Ultra, both variants actually boot up first, uh, Snapdragon is slightly faster and then it's the Snapdragon S21 Ultra and uh, for some reason the Exynos S21 Ultra is taking slightly longer than the other devices but I mean it's not a big deal how often do you re restart your device anyway right and uh, actually after the restart the device become a little bit warm so I guess I'll actually let them rest a bit uh, wait for them to get back to room temperature before we start our first benchmark right okay here we are uh, all these devices are below 30 degrees c and i think we are good to go so the first benchmark we are going to run is n22 okay so let's start the benchmark is going to take a long time so i'll actually speed up the footage Okay, so all the devices have finished the Antutu benchmark, and let's measure the temperature first. It seems that the Snapdragon 888 device is not particularly hot at around 39 degrees. Same for the 8 Gen 1 S22 Ultra. Exynos 2200 is also fine at 39, and the Exynos 2100 is actually a little bit cooler than the rest at uh, only 38, maybe. And uh, for the score, the uh, 8Gen1 seems to be the fastest, followed by the Exynos 2200, and then the Snapdragon 888, and lastly, the Exynos 2100. So you can take a look at the overall score and each breakdown here. I won't spend much more time on these, right? So we let the device uh, cool down to room temperature, and uh, let's start next test, which is Geekbench 5. Okay, so after the test, all these devices are not very hot. It's only around 36, 37, 38 degrees, right? And uh, actually the score are very, very similar, except for Exynos 2200, which is a bit higher on the multi-core score. All the other three devices actually have very similar multi-core score. And then for single-core score, the 8 Gen 1 is slightly better than the rest. They are surprisingly close, I have to say. Okay, devices have cooled down and uh, let's move on to our next test which will be PC Mark. So I think PC Mark is similar to N22 which is also a comprehensive benchmark but it focuses more on uh, productivity performance rather than entertainment. So that's just my two cents. Anyway, here are the results and uh, it's quite surprising that the S22 Ultra actually scores a little bit lower than S21 Ultra for both the Exynos and Snapdragon variant. Um, 
Personally, I think the PC Mark maybe uh, rely more on system or kernel optimization, which the S22 Ultra lacks at the moment, because the S21 Ultra has so many system updates and uh, it was so well optimized. But anyway, I'll just show you the true score and uh, results. It's up to you how you make sense out of it, right? And uh, next, we'll run GFX Bench. And of course, all the devices are properly cooled down before we start running the benchmark. And here, we'll actually run all the off-screen benchmarks because they are more comparable. And they all run at a fixed resolution. So your screen resolution does not affect the scores. Okay, so all the benchmarks have finished. And uh, this one, I think, is more stressful than the previous benchmarks. We see that the device uh, temperature is higher than before. The Snapdragon 8 Java S22 Ultra in particular has 45 degrees, which I consider pretty hot. And uh, all the other three devices are at around 41 to 42 degrees. But in this test, we also see the biggest performance disparity. We see that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 really, really outperforms in terms of graphics performance. It consistently outperforms the Exynos 2200 in all of the graphics tests. Uh, and it's the same story for the S21 Ultra. We see that the Snapdragon is just faster for GPU. But the good thing is that uh, the Exynos 2200 is at least still faster than last year's Snapdragon 888. Next test will be a more interesting one. We'll actually run the 3D Mark stress test. So this is a 20 minutes a very high stress GPU test. And uh, it actually tests the stability or to say the thermal stability of the devices, like uh, how this device can perform under sustained high load. So this makes this test particularly practical uh, if you want to play heavy games for a prolonged period of time. Okay, so after this test, all the devices also become pretty hot. Uh, we see the Exynos 2100 is around 43 degrees. The 2200 is also around 43 degrees. Uh, same story for the 8 Gen 1. And the 888 seems to be slightly cooler at around 40 degrees. Then in terms of performance, it's actually good news for Exynos. And here we see that the two S22 Ultra, although the best loop score is much higher on the Snapdragon, the lowest score is actually more or less the same. So that means if you play a game for a long time and eventually the device reaches thermal equilibrium, they have more or less the same performance. So you can expect more or less the same gaming experience. And we also see a very healthy improvement from last generation uh, in terms of both the best loop score and the lowest loop score. Okay, last test we are going to run is not an official benchmark, but it's rather a, it's an interesting application to test the CPU stability under sustained load, right? So it's similar to 3D Mark stress test, but this is for CPU. So this test will will run a workload on all eight cores of the CPU, and we'll see how much they throttle after 15 minutes. Okay, so this last test also finished, and uh, I'll just leave it to you to look at the temperature and the max and the mean scores, because this is not some official benchmark, so I'll try not to uh, talk too much about it. So we've done quite a few benchmarks, uh, and uh, to be honest, I feel the S22 Ultra Snapdragon and Exynos are not that different in terms of the raw performance. And for CPU performance, they are not even that different from last year S21 Ultra, right? So all these four devices are actually surprisingly similar in terms of CPU performance 
but we do see some healthy improvements in terms of GPU and that by right should help the gaming performance, which so far we haven't seen. And just another thing, I don't know how many of you have noticed, all these four devices started from 100% battery and they did exactly the same set of tests. They run every test for exactly the same amount of time. And have you noticed that the 2S21 Ultra and the test at 70% of battery, while the S22 Ultra and at 68 and 66%. So yes, they are slightly more powerful, but they are also more power hungry. And I think now it makes sense that we are seeing slightly worse battery life from S22 Ultra comparing to S21 Ultra. All right, guys, so that's all for today. Please subscribe to my channel and uh, share the video to your friends or community if you think that this video can help them. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.